All right, so I was uh, doing a few more K7000s today, and uh, I was looking at this ridiculous pile of flybacks and figured it might be worth making a quick video about uh, some of the issues you run into with these. Um, bigger picture thing of working on K7000s. Um, basically, if you are if you have games with, that get a, a significant amount of use, for the most part, you want to swap the flybacks when you're rebuilding them. Um, you know, if you're just a collector at home, for the most part, it's not that critical. Um, but in general, so these are all original K7000 flybacks. And the reason I've got a box of a couple hundred of them here is about um, maybe two years ago. I think it was 2018. I, you know, I was hearing some rumors that the company that makes the uh, the reproduction flybacks that uh, that everybody is using. Um, like So these... Uh, he he's looking for an excuse apparently he wants to stop making them um but you know th i mean th there's a bit of there's enough of a market for him so he keeps he keeps making them but I, um another supplier friend of mine was get was getting a bit spooked um that they were that he was not going to be able to get them in the near future so so the ones that i was rebuilding um i started saving some of the some of the nicer ones so this is this is about two years worth here i wasn't saving them before that um so and there's i don't know there's probably about 200 of them in here maybe 250 um but for the most part so um the only reason you really need to, sw to swap them first of all all of these work um you know the, the main reason that these need to get swapped uh especially if you know if, if you're having your games like operate for more than a few hours at a time when when the flyback gets up to kind of operating temp um you know, and then cools back down again it's it's stressing the, the the plastic on the flyback itself which normally isn't much of a problem there's a couple things it can cause over time sometimes you can get some arcs forming from cracks developing in the plastic but the but the real what the, the actual problem is is in the pot block here on the front there's two potentiometers one for screen your grid two um, you know, your master brightness control and then your focus. And what happens is, is you get cracks through the plastic. And so if you ever see a, a 7000 or, I mean, any monitor really, where it doesn't want to stay in focus, like after an hour or two, the focus might change. Um, or maybe the brightness might start slowly getting brighter or might start slowly getting dimmer. Sometimes they'll even like rapidly change brightness. It just depends on how bad it is. Um... I think most of these, you know, generally the, the flybacks of the white knobs are a little less reliable than the ones with the, with the black knobs. Um, I think the black knobs are made by Meritron. Um, so these ones, I see, you seem to see fewer cracks in them, and they seem to hold up a little bit better. Um, but, you know, if you're after running games a while... You know, it just it gets to be so obnoxious, like dealing with like issues of of a otherwise perfectly rebuilt and working chassis. Um, but then you start, you know, it's hard to keep it in focus or in brightness. You know, at the at the level you want. All of these are looking pretty good because I mean, generally I throw out the really poor ones. Um, let's see if any of these have a big crack. So this one's got them. So you can see the crack there, but it's not cracked all the way through. A lot of times they crack all the way through. And so what's actually happening in, in there is the plastic can't keep like this, the consistent amount of pressure um, in, you know, from the, from the pot wiper to the, to the pot material, like the, you know, the deposit or whatever it's, that's in there. Um, and, you know, and, and, and it'll just kind of like drift. Like, so whenever you see that kind of issue, if, if you're getting drift on your focus or screen, um, a lot of times just pushing on it or obviously just wiggling it around, um, you can see some things. But I mean, another problem too is I'm, I'm guessing, you know, now dust can get in there if there's cracks. So everything just kind of goes downhill quick. So here, I found another one. Uh, I can get this. This one's funny. I, I must have dropped this one at some point, but I just, I saw it on the top here before I started the video. I was just going to throw it out, but there's an example. I mean, obviously this isn't functional, but... But you do see this where they're cracked in a manner like like this bad. Um, so, I mean, this works. Obviously, it's junk now. But, so at any rate, so I'm saving these for a rainy day in case 
the Hovey King flybacks aren't available. So now the company that makes these, um, you know, they've been making them for about 15 years now, at least. I think the oldest date I've seen on one is like 2003 or something like that. I mean, Wells Gardner was had only stopped making K7000s like maybe a year or two earlier. Like, you know, they're 25-inch K7000s that were made in 2001. So, um, you know, but so they hopped on the on that pretty quick and started making them. But, um, so yeah, so the company that makes these Hovey King, they're not, they're not that much money. They're, I think they're about seven bucks each. If you're buying in quantity, you have to buy 200 at a time. So again, it's, you know, don't hassle them. You can't, you can't buy direct. It's not possible. So only if you're going to buy at least 200 of them. And then after shipping and tariffs in this day and age, you're paying about 12 bucks each. So, you know, when, when you do this amount of them, it's, it's, you know, it's worth ordering them yourself. Um, but, you know, if you're just buying from suppliers, there's a, most of the suppliers, this is like one of the most common flybacks, these and Geo 7s. So, I mean, in general, you know, everybody carries them. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, arcade parts and repair. He's a, he's a good guy to buy stuff from if you're buying, if you need cap kits, I mean, I, you know, Generally, if you're going to do any number, if, if you're going to do more than a couple of anything, really, what you should do is maybe, or if you plan to get more games in the future, maybe work your way towards starting your own little cap bin up as long as you're not going to keep them around for a decade because you, you still want newer date code caps. But, you know, it is always, you know, better to to buy direct from from parts houses than, like, arcade resellers for the most part when it comes to electronic components. Um so, you know, because any electronic components arcade real sellers are, are having, they're either buying surplus or they're just, for the most part, they're just buying from Digikey or Mauser, which is the same that everybody else can do, and then just kind of marking up the price double. Um, so, you know, I'm sure out there somewhere there's some build order manifests, you know, some little BOMs. You can just click. It'll put everything in your cart that if you need all your caps for a K7000 or, uh, you know, an MS9 or whatever you're working on. Um, but you know, if you need a few here and there, I mean, you know, buy from those guys cause they, they've got it all and you got to buy from them for the flybacks. Um, so probably the better people to buy the flybacks from if you need more than a few, if you use Zanin or probably, I think, uh, Paradise Arcade just got some in and they're going to, um, um, you know, I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll do decent deals, but I think, I think, I think Zanin gets down to 17 bucks each or something like that. If you're going to buy more than a handful, if you're buying, buying like 10 of them or something like that. So, um, you know, I mean, I know people like Twisted Quarter, um, competitive products isn't really around much anymore. They would sell them for under 18 bucks if you're buying three. Um, you know, but that's probably just a holdover from the days before tariffs where everything was, a, a you know, a couple bucks less. But so anyway, um, so, I mean, that, that's where you get these and the expectation is they're going to be around a while. Um, so I'm not too worried about it again, but, uh, but it got me into this habit and this is fine for now. But, um, so what these are is, so over the past, maybe three years, I've probably done about 300 of these, maybe 350. And these are ones that have failed. Um, so these are in games that are getting run, you know, 14, 15 hours a day. And, uh, um, what I've found is, is you, you see a, a, you know, maybe one in 20 of the Hubby King flybacks will fail. Um, and they all pretty much fail in the same way. Um, you can see right here, there's this weird little hole in the side of the, of the flyback. So what happens is, let me grab a chassis so you can see. Um, so here's our rebuilt chassis. Generally what happens is it, these develop cracks sometimes in the front here right where the where the anode lead comes out but almost always on the side kind of right under under it and then that'll it will just happily arc all day long from the flyback to the to the heat sink here and uh, in the in the monitor for the most part it's it tolerates it for quite a bit of time so it's really loud and noisy so you'll notice it the second it happens but um, you know so it's it's generally when this happens you don't have to replace anything if a fuse blows or something then obviously there's a few obviously you got to check your you know your horizontal output transistor um 
you know, a, another common thing is checking, you know, the, the poly caps, typically C36 here. Um, but, you know, to see if it's shorted. But for the most part, a lot of times it doesn't do any damage. You, you, you just get arcs. But, you know, if you look at a bunch of these... So I, so I, you know, I started keeping these just to kind of get an idea of how many failures we're seeing. Um, but they all, you know, most of these fail in that same spot. That one's there. Some of them will be quite a bit worse, but I mean, that's a pretty big one there. Yeah, on a few of these I have little notes. That's a pretty serious one. This looks like a, this might be is this an older one. So, on um, all of these have a date code down here. Is it 2011? Yep. So yeah, this is an older one, but um. So, I have better luck with those. So, yeah, so hidden under the ferrite, there's always a date code. So, there's a 2013. That's a pretty serious one. Um, this one just says arcing, but I don't see anything immediate. Is that it? No. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't take much. Sometimes just a tiny little hole. Um, but so, I mean, I, you know, I don't know how many are here, or maybe 30 or 40. That's a pretty big one. Yeah. So less common are issues like this. That's, that's really serious. So, but, you know, there's probably only, I don't know, half a dozen of these in here. And, uh... You know, for all we knew, this, I mean, this, this could be caused by a chassis issue or something. You know, I'm, I'm not certain. But this is really rare. I mean, really the only things you really ever see go wrong with these are, are, are the, uh, you know, is the arcing issue. And the thing is, is this, in some cases, this will be repairable. You could get your RTV silicone, high voltage silicone, and just dab a ton of it on there. And it'll, might, that might fix it. Um, you know, especially if you have one of these much less, a much smaller hole. Okay, here's one that cracked in the front. And you can see, you know, kind of the white marks from where it was arcing. But most all, nearly all of them, though, that's where they fail. So it's interesting. I mean, I'd like to take one of these apart and see what is going on in there, but that one failed down lower here. That's interesting. Got a, just a weird little hole in it. This feels like it might be an older one. 2015. Oh, this one failed under the ferrite. That's a 17. Any of these ones with a 17 date code or ones that, uh, that I bought in a big lot from from Movie King Direct. The ones of the older ones are the ones that just ended up um arcs. Yeah, right there. Um, you know, other ones are just be, you know, whatever bought from other suppliers back in the day or just you, you see them coming in on, on other chassis. So that's another one in the front. So anyway, I mean, that's just going to be the story with all of these, really. So, you know, they all have that stuff going on. I think there's some... These ones back here, I think, all died of different issues. Um, otherwise, it works. This one has a bad G2. Yeah. So there's... I know there's probably three or four of them in here where, where it lost the grid 2 voltage, which is screen control. So otherwise, it's working. Um... So, you know, you can see that with CRT failures. It probably just, you know, put too much of a stress on it and just burned out that section of the of the, of the the winding. So there's a couple of those in here. There, yeah, there's a couple of really, a couple of really big failures. Here's a big split. Like this, this is like failing in a way that like a G07 would, but 
again, this is very rare. That's the that's the date code on this one. 2017. So you know, I mean, most of these have been sitting here for a while too. Generally, um, so here's when this is blows hot, but doesn't have anything obviously wrong. So problems like this are, are really uncommon. I mean, really, the like the, they almost always work. Um, they just get the arcing issue. Now, one thing that you would see with older ones, this is not a problem with anyone you're going to buy now. But so these are ones that might be good. These are ones that actually should go through and test. Actually, some of them need to be repaired, um, which is yet another reason why I was keeping some of these around. Because there, there was a period where they used some really poor quality. See, look at this. This is not pliable at all. This is not silicone, you know, like like the the, the, the standard stuff is. Um, so whatever's going on here, this just hardens. And there was a period where, you know, you saw a bit of that. So, okay, that's this one. So, let's see what the date code on this one is. Oh, I can't see that one. Twenty eleven. So... So I guess from around there, and probably, a, you know, there was a not that huge amount of time that there were, there, but there, I mean, there's probably, there must have been a, a couple of years or something like that worth of production where, where this is really the only problem with them. Um, so, I mean, this one, I, I can reuse it. Just got to swap the, the yoke uh, connector or the, the anode connector out with one of these. And of course, you cannot splice high voltage leads. To you know, to to fix that, you'd pull this back and you know just basically desolder this. This is kind of crimped, but you can just kind of pull it off and then flatten it out with some needle nose pliers and crimp it back onto a new one. Um, so it's not. I've I've done it a few times with a few of these and it's it it works fine. So um, you know, so this one will be all right. But there's also going to be a few in here that I'm sure yeah, like this one. There's probably half a dozen of them, or maybe a dozen of them in there, whatever it is, is in there. Probably more than half of these are ones that were just on chassis, like, that had major failures. Like, say you got a, a you know, a, a chassis that was maybe recently rebuilt, but then it comes back and fuse is blown. Like, maybe these diodes are good, um, but the, the hot's blown, the... the the regulator shorted out, C36 just shorted out. A lot of times, even like one of the resistors over here or a couple of the diodes in the vertical section over on this side, coming off the flyback, there's a, a couple diodes and a, and a resistor that basically go and go over to the vertical section. Um, like I've seen them where all, everything seems to have failed and we don't know if it's flyback related or what. The flyback physically looks fine, um, but... When I see that that sort of a failure, I just replace everything and set it aside and not worry about it. But it might be worth testing some of those just in case. Um, but again, you know, when you're buying these in in a quantity and they're only a few bucks each, um, it's easier to just swap them out. But uh, um, so yeah, so that's really what you know what you got to look out for on these. And basically, any supplier, um, if you get you know a, a like catastrophic failure like kind of right away. They're going to cover, you know, hooking you up a new one because they do, they do see some issues like this. But for the most part, like, it's so it's really uncommon. You know, issues like these develop about usually within the first three weeks, like, in daily use. So if you're just putting this in and putting it into a game in your basement, you're unlikely to see issues like this for a while. And again, even if you do, you might be able to just fix it with some silicone. But... Um, so when it when it comes to new flybacks, there's really only one issue that that you get with them. And that's that's just the way they're packaged. They come on this uh, you know little sheet of styrofoam, and I think they're they're putting the pins into the styrofoam when the pins are still hot. And if you look at them, you can see some white gunk on the pins. It's not a clean solder. So what I always do is I get flush cutters and just scrape them off a little bit 
um, you know, just kind of lightly put the flush cutters on there. The same ones you're using for clipping your capacitor legs off of, uh, you know, after you rebuild them. And then, uh, um, and then just kind of lightly put it over the pins and just scrape it in a couple positions to wipe the stuff off. Because, I mean, you can, you can put it in like that and you're going to have to give it a bunch of heat and burn through that garbage. But, you're, it's, but you don't get a good solder joint unless you clean this stuff off. And all of these, all of these flybacks always seem to come, you know, they're always shipped that way. So they don't have clean um, pins like the, the way they're the way they're manufactured. Um, but you know that's really the only issue you get with them. It's they're they're uh, really perfectly reliable. So anyway, I guess hopefully that's informative for somebody. <laughs> the problems you see with these things, and then again, it's it's worth keeping. We were keeping these around at least, you know, if you have a significant amount of games, just in case it comes down to whether these aren't aren't available again, because these are they don't really seem to fail that much. So as long as you can find ones that don't get uh, don't get drift from the pot block, you're okay. So that's that.